Picture this, you prepped your protein, packed your greens, tracked your calories, you're doing everything to get lean, but you're still bloating. What's up? Hey, today I'm taking you through what I eat as well as sharing the strategies I've used to reduce bloating long-term. I've been on my digestive journey for about a year now, and by digestive journey, I mean that journey from the point where my bloating went from being a here and there thing to like an everyday occurrence. I've tried a lot of things, I've been at this a bit. What I've come to realize is that many bloating fixes work in the short-term, but are either unsustainable or just not enjoyable in the long-term. They're band-aid solutions, quick fixes for what is realistically a long-term journey. Of course, you can cut a million foods from your diet and get by, but I wanna live life, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Before we get into that, I wanna say a huge thank you to Seed for partnering with me on today's video. The Seed Daily Symbiotic is a two-in-one capsule that combines prebiotics and probiotics. I've been using it for the past few months to work smarter, not harder toward my digestive goals. We'll talk more about that later in today's video. For now, I'll put a link in the description box down below to save 15% off your first month's supply. Welcome to my morning moves. Bit of a later start this morning. It is just after 10 a.m., but we have had some late nights editing this week, so this is where we're at. Anyways, whenever my sleep is off, my stomach is off, but two things I do every morning to help support my digestion, my gut health, getting things back on track, are one, I take my probiotic. For the past few months, I've been using the Seed Daily Symbiotic, which combines prebiotics with probiotics in one capsule. It's like the best of both worlds. While probiotics are often recommended for bloating, they're by no means a quick fix. This is something that you'll probably not going to feel a difference with until after a few weeks. For me, it was kind of subtle at first and it's gotten better with time, but I just find that my gut is more resilient overall. I bounce back quicker after a night of like not a lot of sleep, like last night. I find that I have less inflammation overall. I'm less like puffy through that low belly area. Things just keep moving a little bit better. The second thing I do are my morning moves. If you follow me on Insta, you know I am obsessed with my exercise bike. Every morning, 30 to 60 minutes. I get on here. It doesn't have to be super high intensity or super sweaty you know there's a time and a place for that but this is more so my morning wake up it's just part of my routine it's something I do I recently got this bike sit stand desk thing that I'm really excited about you can't see it right now the real reason I do my morning moves though and the real benefit of them from a digestive standpoint I would say comes down to the circadian rhythm the natural 24 hour cycle that many of the processes in your body follow like everything from body temperature to digestion to salivation most of which slow down at night so when you have a night of bad sleep or when your sleep cycle gets disrupted or broken up what can happen is these cycles get a little bit out of sync making you feel not so great the next day where exercise comes in is it can help get these cycles back in sync so for example if you do exercise first thing in the morning that's going to help raise your core body temperature something that should naturally be happening in the morning anyways increase blood flow to the brain to the body to the muscles as well as if you do it at a high enough intensity at a moderate to high intensity it can release hormones that help support alertness not to mention exercise exercise at any intensity, so regardless of how you move, has been shown to support gastric emptying and motility. So if you wake up feeling kind of backed up, you know, your morning routine is not progressing as it normally does, get moving, it'll probably get you going. took every fiber of my bean to not make apple protein pancakes this morning, but we're trying something new. I'm doing this for you. So today we made lemon blueberry protein muffins. And I have to say, I'm very impressed by these. So I'll link the recipe down below for you. Okay, so to give you some background on my bloating journey, about a year ago, my bloating went from being a here and there thing to an everyday occurrence. I didn't have any major changes in my diet. There was no big life event. Sure, I was stressed, who wasn't at the time. But what was confusing was that the healthier I tried to eat, more greens, more veggies, more protein, the worse my symptoms seemed to get, which was very confusing. So I did some digging and I came across the low FODMAP diet. This is an elimination type diet that focuses on a group of foods, FODMAPs, that are often harder to digest, which can lead to inflammation in the gut. The diet is broken down into three phases. The first phase being the elimination phase where you remove 
all FODMAPs from your diet to get to a baseline of no symptoms. The next phase is the reintroduction phase where you reintroduce high FODMAP foods one at a time in very specific amounts to figure out how much your body can handle without developing symptoms. And then the final stage of the diet is the integration phase where you take everything you learned from those previous two phases, integrate it into your new lifestyles that presumably you can live symptom free. I made it through the elimination phase and partly through the reintroduction phase. So I'll preface this by saying that a low FODMAP diet would be much easier and safer to navigate under the guidance of a registered dietitian or health professional trained with this type of nutrition and diet protocol. If you're new to my page, this is by no means my first rodeo with diets. I have done meal plans. I've done flexible dieting, calorie counting. I even did keto for a little bit. What frustrated me about the low FODMAP diet, and I think this bloating situation as a whole, is that I spent so long working to reconnect with my hunger and fullness cues, to eat food without rules, to understand my body's needs without counting calories. And this whole experience just felt like it threw me for a loop. So I put my big girl pants on and I asked for help. While I pride myself on my ability to review science and pull from experience, being smart isn't about what you know, but how you grow. So I found a doctor who has proper nutrition training, is experienced with IBS, IBS type symptoms, low FODMAP diets, all that jazz. Not all doctors do have nutrition training, so be careful. And we started the process of digging deeper. This has been a slow process still because many labs have been running behind schedule the past year, but we started our journey together with a fecal analysis. If you do not know what a fecal analysis is, it's like a poop sample. They take a look at your poop, they make a profile of it, and it gives us a starting point. This can answer, is there a bacterial imbalance? Is there an issue with nutrient absorption? What is going on inside my body? This is a first step in that direction. In the meantime, while we're waiting for test results, because yes, this is a very recent thing. It took me a long time to ask for help. <laughs> We've been focusing on smaller lifestyle changes, things I can do in my everyday life, like eating more dietary fiber. We've been easing this up very gradually with food sources that are well tolerated for me. You'll see this in the meals later today. We've also been working on eating more protein more regularly. I will be honest, my nutrition has not been the best or the most balanced this past year when I started to really struggle with the bloating and it felt like nothing was relieving it. I ate a lot of rice. I ate a lot of foods that I knew digested well for me, but this meant that other foods kind of suffered. And of course, I've been taking my C daily symbiotic. I've been talking about the daily symbiotic for the past few months now. The most important thing to understand is that nothing is going to be a quick fix. Like I said at the start, sure, there are certain things you can do that will temporarily relieve bloating, but those results are not going to stick. If you want to feel good in your body consistently, it comes down to routine. Yes, bloating is normal, but it doesn't have to be your normal. I like the C daily symbiotic because it contains 24 science-backed brains designed for systemic benefits. So beyond just bloating, it also improves gastrointestinal function, keeping you regular. Yes, also reducing bloating, relieving constipation. It also supports gut barrier integrity. Think keeping what needs to be in your gut in and what needs to be outside of your gut out, which can help reduce inflammation as well as unnecessary stress on your body. There are many other benefits, including cardiovascular health, immune function, metabolic health, and the list goes on. Of course, everybody's journey will be unique, but what I love about Seed is that it fits seamlessly into any routine and it ships to you monthly. I actually just got my most recent monthly shipment, so I figured I'd show you what it looks like, how it arrives to you, all that jazz. The way it works is your first month's supply arrives with two containers, the main glass jar and then the mini travel vial because no refrigeration is necessary. If you're on the go, if you're traveling somewhere, you can just take pills from here, put them in here, pack them good to go. Each month following that, you will then get your sustainable refill system. So this is the outer that it ships in. It doesn't ship in a box. It ships in like this kind of envelope thing that's very sturdy, but it's made out of algae paper, which is super cool. Go inside, this is where the magic happens. In here, in this pouch within a pouch, we have got our bio-based tray, which actually contains the refill pills. So this is made out of starch, natural fibers, and water. It's completely biodegradable, compostable. And so the idea is that we take our little pills that are inside here, pour them into your glass jar and then you're good to go for another month. And so the idea is that you take your refill pills, pour them into the glass jar, then keep using that. Of course, glass is recyclable, but it's also durable. So 
I like that they have this system in this way so they're not just sending you a bunch of new but also unnecessary packaging every month. I think that's kind of cool. Anyways, if you want to check it out see for yourself, I will put that link in the description box down below to save 15% off your first month's supply. What's up? Welcome to my picnic. Because we had so much fun with our last picnic. Oh, oh my gosh. I figured we'd do another. Turns out it wasn't a great idea. It is very buggy today despite the breeze. So Jeff is currently taking a walk in the park because the bugs just eat him alive. I have packed this little lunch. I don't know if Jeff's actually gonna sit down to have his here. He might just continue with his walk in the park. But this is a crunchy Thai salad that I found a recipe for on Pinterest. I've been kind of on a Pinterest kick. Comment down below if you also use Pinterest. Wow, oh, look who has arrived. Anyways, in here we have got red cabbage diced red bell pepper, diced cucumber, roasted chickpeas, they were just some leftovers from the other day, green onions, diced carrots, there might be some more veggies that I'm forgetting. We have quinoa as well as ground turkey that I completely made up a seasoning for, but it kind of worked, so I'll link that down below. We have got a peanut sauce that I will be serving kind of like mixed in, as well as some crushed peanuts that I more so packed for Jeff, so I mean, we'll see. <laughs> Beyond morning moves, I am a big believer in daily activity. Activity outside of your structured workouts, especially if you are relatively sedentary during the day. I know I always show you guys the active bits of my day, the workouts, all that jazz, but most of the time I am sat at my computer either researching or editing for a video. So any opportunity for activity, even if it's just getting up, walking across the street, walking to a local park to eat lunch, every bit counts because there are so many benefits to activity beyond just burning calories with digestion being one of the big ones. Whether I'm bloated, I've overeaten, I'm just generally lacking energy, I swear walking solves 99% of my problems. So like we were talking about earlier, nice little high fiber, high protein meal. Most of these, minus the I'd say cabbage and carrot, are relatively easy to digest higher fiber veggie sources. This mosquito can just get right out. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of my peanut sauce, eat as much as I can of this before getting eaten alive by bugs, and then I will check in with you in a bit. Okay, so activity, yes, got it, but building off of what we were talking about this morning, movement done at any intensity can support gastric emptying and motility aka keeping things moving through your body. While bloating can be caused by many different things, one of the most common causes or symptoms, depending on how you look at it, is food spending longer than it needs to in your digestive tract. This can lead to water retention, gas buildup, that general feeling of heaviness. So anything you can do to help keep things moving is in your best interest from a bloating standpoint. Now, something you may have noticed is that I do not snack much. Beyond the meals you've seen so far today, all I've had is a protein bar. I actually had the Women's Best Smart Bar in the chocolate hazelnut flavor before my workout, so good. But I don't snack much. It's not because I don't like to eat. It's not because I don't see food or think about food or think, oh, you know, a snack might be nice here or there. It's because A, I make an effort to eat enough at my meals so that I'm not starving before my next meal. And B, I've intentionally cut back on snacking in an effort to reduce bloating. Many processes in the body operate in a cyclical manner. There's the circadian rhythm we talked about earlier that operates on a 24 hour clock and can be disrupted when your sleep schedule is thrown off. But there's another cycle called the migrating motor complex that operates on an even shorter cycle and is perhaps even more important for digestion. As this describes the rhythmic smooth muscle contractions that help move food down your digestive tract. The catch is that this process only functions in the time spent fasting between meals. As soon as you eat, the cycle is interrupted. Now while different people's cycles will take different amounts of time, research suggests that three to four hours should be enough time for a cycle to complete. So as long as you leave a without that much time between your snacks or meals, you should be okay. A well-functioning digestion is like a highway. Your meals are adequately spaced, the migrating motor complex is not interrupted, and so it's smooth sailing in terms of digestion. Whereas a not so well-functioning digestion might be like driving through the city at rush hour. It's stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. Stopping and restarting every time you interrupt the cycle with a snack. It's that time again. We are making sandwiches for dinner. Hi, Murph. Hello.
that is it for today's video. If there is one thing I want to make clear, it's that with any health and fitness journey, it comes down to what you can do consistently. This is the routine that works for me. Daily activity, eating larger meals less frequently, and not obsessing over what I eat. Yes, there are definitely days where my brain feels like a dumpster fire trying to balance this newfound knowledge of my digestion and gut health with also trying to let go of food rules while also eating for performance with my endurance when I run, but like strength when I'm weightlifting. Knowledge is power, but knowledge can also feel overwhelming. So just know whenever I share videos like this, this truly is what I found works for me at this point in my life based on the years of experience I've had before this and what I've learned about my body. Of course, I hope that you can relate to some part of this journey and it will maybe inspire you or can serve as a starting point to point you in the right direction, but just know it would make no sense for you to copy this exactly. It's really about taking inspiration, trying things out and figuring out what works best in your routine on the daily. I think the low FODMAP diet and even tools like calorie macro tracking can be great in the short term to build awareness around what you're eating and how those foods affect your body. It's like putting training wheels on your routine. For example, after the many years I spent calorie tracking, I can look at almost any food and estimate a portion easy, but calorie counting has its pros and cons. Same goes for the low FODMAP diet. While we could get into the nitty gritty of why these these things did or didn't work for me. What it really comes down to is if you don't enjoy your routine, it's not a long-term strategy, no matter how effective it may seem. I said this earlier, I've said it before, it's a little mantra, I've been telling myself, reminding myself, but being smart is not about what you know, but how you grow. It is about being able to recognize and take responsibility for situations that are no longer serving you. There is no one size fits all for health. It really comes down to determining your needs, setting a standard for life quality and then showing up consistently mentally and physically. Enough preaching, but if you found this video helpful, make sure to shoot me a thumbs up. I will link that seed daily symbiotic I mentioned in the description box down below, as well as a link to save 15% of your first month supply. I have got a whole mini series coming out for you that I've been planning for the past few months talking about calories, my experience, my many years counting calories and how I made the transition to where I'm at now. This has been a highly requested topic for a long time now. I've been kind of turning it over in my head trying to figure out how to tackle it. I think we got it nearly figured out. So we've got that to look forward to. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.